Good morning, pilot. We have a lot of ground to cover, so let's begin. This lesson will cover the operation of the avionics specific to the co-pilot gunner position, how to use the weapon systems aboard the aircraft, and some useful strategies including avoiding threats and how to best utilize your wingman. Ready? Let's go. Disengage the rotor brake and begin flying towards waypoint two. Before you can attack the enemy, you must first find him. The co-pilot gunner is responsible for spotting, identifying, and tracking enemy units. There is a variety of equipment available for the CPG to do this. Switch to the CPG cockpit by pressing the keypad insert key. All flight controls are also included in the front seat, allowing the CPG to fly the aircraft if the pilot is killed or disabled during combat. There are also two multifunction displays which will display the same pages available to the pilot. These MFDs are independent of the pilot's MFDs, so you can keep separate displays active in the front and back seat. The best method is to keep the pages relating to the offensive systems active in the CPG seat, and those MFDs pertaining to the defensive systems active in the pilot's seat. The heads down display, or HDD, consists of two eyepieces which relay information from the sensor systems. The heads out display relays information from the active sensor to a small screen, useful for making a quick scan without going heads down. Okay, take a look around the cockpit and I'll continue when we arrive at waypoint two. Pull to a hover at waypoint two. Come on, put the aircraft into a hover. I'd like to begin by talking about the TADS, or Target Acquisition and Designation System. The TADS is actually made up of several different types of viewing systems. These include the FLIR, or Forward Looking Infrared, the DTV, or Day Television, the DVO, 
for direct view optics and the laser rangefinder. Your active sighting system is shown on the TSD and will display either TADS or FCR, or depending on the mode you're currently in. You can toggle between the two modes by pressing the home key. But for now, let's stay in TADS mode. The FLIR is designed to find targets by detecting heat sources. The camera can differentiate between various heat signatures and will display them as different shades of black and white. This is extremely useful at night or when the enemy is well camouflaged, since a vehicle's engine will generate heat, making it contrast sharply against its surroundings. You can toggle the polarity of the FLIR so heat sources will stand out in either light or dark tones. White hot mode displays heat sources as white tones against a dark background. Black hot mode does the opposite, displaying heat sources as dark tones against a white background. Let's try out this system. Go heads down by pressing the keypad period key. You're now looking through the HDD in FLIR white hot mode. Look how easy it is to spot things now. To pan the camera around, you can use the keypad arrow keys, left clicking with your mouse around the edges of the screen, or by using the joystick and alt key. You can recenter the camera by using the keypad 5 key. The camera will zoom in on the target by pressing the keypad plus key. Zoom out by using the keypad minus key. Toggle the FLIR's polarity now by pressing the keypad 7 key. You're now in black hot mode. This mode is the inverse of white hot, with heat sources showing as dark tones against a light background. Okay, let's switch to the next camera by pressing the keypad 1 key. The day television, or DTV, is another optical system available to you. The DTV is a television camera with a high level of zoom enabling you to accurately identify and target threats at medium and long ranges. Again, press the keypad 1 key. The third system is known as DVO or direct view optics. The DVO is a series of lenses which magnify an image coming in through the sensor system. This magnified image is then relayed to one of the eyepieces in the HDD. This system is best used to identify targets at medium ranges and will give a wider field of view than the other systems. Once you find a target, you'll need to provide range information to the weapon systems. The most accurate range to target information is provided by the laser designator. Let's go ahead and target one of the vehicles out in front of you. As potential enemy targets are spotted, they are added to a list. To select a target in this list, use the T key. To target the most dangerous threat, use the Alt T key. You can target friendly vehicles by using the Y key. You can cycle backwards through all of these targets by using the Shift key along with whichever targeting key was used. Select a target by pressing the T key. Okay. okay. Now that you have an enemy targeted, take an enemy target at the high action display. The range to target information is displayed in kilometers. Since neither the laser or FCR are active, the method used to calculate that distance is called TADS triangulation. The distance is calculated by measuring the angles between the camera and the target. This is the least accurate method. Now activate the laser designator by pressing the keypad enter key. The symbology has changed to show it though the laser is active and the range to target distance is now shown in meters. The flashing asterisk also indicates the laser is active. This is the most accurate way to determine the distance to a target. This method is called buddy lasing. 
Chain gun accuracy will increase if your target is being lazed due to the increased range accuracy. Okay, take some time to get familiar with these sensors. Switch between the different cameras and see how they differ. When you're done, fly to the next waypoint and pull to a hover on arrival. Okay, put the aircraft into a hover. Come to a hover. The Longbow Fire Control Radar, or FCR, is one of the most advanced radar systems available on today's battlefield. The radar dome sits above the helicopter's rotor, which allows you to peek from behind hills to get a radar picture of your surroundings without exposing yourself to the enemy. The radar system uses millimeter wave emissions to identify and classify targets. Switch to FCR mode by pressing the home key. Notice how the HOD is now displaying the radar. Let's go ahead and activate the radar. Press the keypad enter key. The radar is now active, indicated by the sweeping arm on the rad display. You'll also see an FCCR transmit message when it's active. Keeping the radar on continuously will provide constant target updates, but will also increase your chances of being detected by the enemy. To avoid this, you can set the radar to perform a single sweep at a time. Press the keypad 3 key. Perform a single sweep by pressing the keypad enter key. The best strategy is to keep the radar in single sweep mode and scan the area periodically. 
You can also control where the radar is pointing by narrowing the scan coverage. Press the keypad down arrow key. Notice how the radar zone narrow. Press the down arrow key one more time. Now that you have narrowed the coverage zone, you can pan that zone left or right. Press the keypad left arrow. Good. Now try panning to the right. Press the keypad right arrow key. Using a narrow scan coverage will send out the radar signals in a focused area, which will reveal your location to fewer enemy units, as well as providing faster radar updates. Once your radar starts finding targets, they are classified by type. That information is displayed on the raw radar display and TSD. Each type of unit has a unique symbol. Tracked vehicles such as tanks appear as an H. Air defense units, including SAMs and AAA, appear as a triangle. Wheeled vehicles, such as trucks, show up as a circle. Helicopters will appear as a bow tie shape. Fixed wing aircraft appear as a small airplane symbol. Targets the FCR cannot identify are shown as a square. Now, if you have line of sight to the target, its symbol will appear solid. If you lose line of sight, the symbol will become outlined. A very useful piece of equipment aboard the longbow is called the sea scope. The sea scope incorporates some of the features of the FCR into the TADS sensors. Go ahead and switch to TADS mode. Press the, the home key. Let's go heads down. Press the The C-scope takes the symbols from the TSD and will place them on top of the object seen through the TADS. This makes it very easy to identify distant targets. Let's move on to talk about the air-to-air -air radar. Its operation is very similar to the air-to-ground radar. Switch to the air radar by pressing the page up key. The air radar can cover a full 360-degree arc. However, like the ground radar, you can change the scan coverage to cover a more focused area. Press the keypad down arrow key. The display has become a semicircle. Try panning left using the keypad left arrow key. You can also set the air radar to perform single or continuous sweeps using the keypad 3 key. Okay, now that you know how to find targets, let's find learn how to destroy them. Proceed to the next waypoint and pull to a hover on arrival. Pull to a hover. The first weapon I'll talk about is the 30 millimeter chain gun automatic cannon. The chain gun is most useful against soft targets, such as light vehicles and infantry, 
equipment and is accurate to about a kilometer. Remember, its accuracy will improve if you're using the laser for ranging. Target one of the vehicles in front of you. Go ahead and fire on the target. This is fun. Shoot your target. Nice shot. Easy, huh? Once you've destroyed a target, the CPG will automatically switch to the next target in the list. Take some time to play around with a chain gun. There are several groups of targets for you to destroy on the way to the next waypoint. When you're ready, continue to the next waypoint. That's enough. Continue to the next waypoint. That's enough. Continue to the next waypoint.
Another weapon available to you is the folding fin aerial rocket. To select rockets as your active weapon system, press the backspace key. Switch to rockets by pressing the backspace key. You have a choice of carrying either high explosive or submunition rockets. High explosive rockets are most useful against lightly armored targets such as air defense vehicles, buildings, or trucks. Submunition or MPSM rockets separate before impact, releasing clusters of small bomb lusters which have an area effect. Rockets are useful out to approximately three kilometers. To help compensate for the range limitation, the rocket pods are attached to articulated pylons which tilt up and down. Since rockets are unguided, you'll need to line up directly with the target to fire. The I-beam cursor is what you'll use to aim the rockets. When your target is within firing constraints, the cursor will become solid. Otherwise, it will remain dashed. Now go ahead and line up on one of the targets ahead. When the cursor becomes solid, fire. I'm waiting for you to launch. Press. Line up on a target and launch. Looks like you missed. Keep launching until you destroy a target. You missed. Keep firing until you score a kill. score a kill. Nice shot. If your target is more than lightly armored, or if you are trying to cover a wider area, you can increase the number of rockets fired in each salvo. You have a choice of 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16 rockets fired per shot. To adjust the ripple rate, use the S key. The selected ripple rate is shown on the weapon MFD. Okay, fly around for a little while and test out the rocket system. When done, fly to the next waypoint. Continue to the next waypoint.
roll the aircraft to a hover. Next, I'd like to talk about your air-to-air -air missile, the Stinger. Switch to Stingers by pressing the backspace key. The set of two concentric rings bouncing around your eye heads is called the Donut. The circle's movement represents the motion of the Stinger's seeking your head trying to find targets. In order to find and engage air threats, you'll need to have the longbow radar in air mode. Remember, use the keypad enter key to start the air radar sweeping if it isn't already doing so. Okay, you should see some targets appearing. Select one by pressing the T key. Now that you've selected a target, you can see how the donut attached itself to the target and you can hear the lock tone. Go ahead and launch a missile. Good job. Enemy helicopters can represent a significant threat as they have the same ability to hide themselves that you do. Be wary in hilly areas and perform FCR scans for air threats with the same regularity you do for ground threats. Even though you only carry four stingers, the chain gun is just as effective against helicopters as it is other vehicles. Go ahead and proceed to the next waypoint. There are several other air threats for you to engage on the way. Pull to a hover on arrival at the next waypoint. Launching Hellfire! to a hub. I'll now instruct you on how to use the weapon the longbow was designed to deliver, the Hellfire missile. The Hellfire was designed to destroy heavily armored tanks, but it will work equally well against any target including buildings. There are two modes from which you can launch the Hellfire. Lock on before launch, L-O-B-L, -L, or lock on after launch, or L-O-A-L. L-O-B-L -L is the simpler of the two. The currently selected mode is shown on the eye hands. In this mode, you must first lock on to a target and keep the target locked until the missile impacts. This is known as direct fire and is used in the direct fire master mode. In lock on after launch mode, you don't need to have the target locked before you fire. You can use the FCR to get a radar snapshot of the area and then select a target on the TSD. You don't need to have the target locked to fire. After launch, the missile will loft up towards the target. 
A few seconds before impact, check you must re-illuminate the target with the FCR. The missile will need a last missing it update for terminal missile homing. This method is known as indirect fire and is used with the indirect fire master mode. To switch between LOVL and LOAL modes, you can either change master modes or press the insert key. To switch between LOVL and LOAL modes, you can either change master modes or press the insert key. Now, besides having these two launch modes, there are also two variants of the Hellfire you can choose to carry. The AGM-114B Hellfire is laser guided and is the older of the two. The laser Hellfire is LOVL only and the target must be illuminated continuously until impact. You can change targets while the missile is in flight, but if it is too far along its flight path, it will be unable to turn in time and will most likely miss both targets. The AGM-114K Hellfire II should be your main choice for combat missions. This variant uses radar signals from the Longbow FCR for guidance. Let's try out these systems. Switch your active weapon to Hellfire by pressing the backspace key. We'll try lock on before launch mode first. Remember, you can switch to LOBL mode by pressing the insert key. Or by changing master modes with the M key. Okay. On your TSD, there should be several groups of targets. Select the target by using your mouse on the TSD or by pressing the T key. A diamond will appear around your target symbol. If the lock box is not solid, turn your aircraft towards your target until it becomes solid. Fire a missile when you have a good lock. As I said before, you must keep your target locked for the duration of the missile's flight. Good shot. Although a fairly easy method, LOBL mode is more dangerous to use since you'll be exposed while the missile is in flight. To avoid this, you should use the indirect fire method. Switch to lock on after launch mode by pressing the insert key. Notice how the missile constraint box is larger, reflecting the larger lock envelope for this mode. Okay, to effectively demonstrate how to use LOAL mode, I'd like to move to the next waypoint, which is located near a ridge line. This will give us the opportunity to use the terrain to mask ourselves and to perform some pop-up attack, the preferred method of attack with a longbow. So far, we've learned how to find and attack the enemy. Another important aspect of combat aviation is avoiding detection. The easiest way to do this is to stay below the altitude threshold at which their radar can detect you. This is called flying nap of all the earth. Low and slow should be how you fly all of your missions. Low, so the enemy doesn't detect you. Slow, so you have time to react to your environment. So let's try flying low. Real low. I want you to stay below 75 feet until we reach the next waypoint. You're too high. Get back below 75 feet. Uh, 
Okay. Pull to a hover now that we're at the waypoint. Okay. At this point, I'd like to begin discussing how to perform a coordinated attack. This will involve the use of indirect fire mode, as well as some cooperation from your wingman. Your wingman's job is to assist you during the mission with finding and attacking the enemy, as well as providing protection for you. There are several commands you can issue your wingman. To have him attack your current target, press the Control-3 key. After issuing the command, you will receive a verbal response confirming your order. If he is unable to comply with your request, you'll get a brief explanation why not. To give him the green light to fire at will, called Weapons Free, press the Control-6 key. At that point, he will engage any target he feels is a threat. To have your wingman hold fire, called Weapons Hold, Press the Control-5 key. You can order your wingman to return to base by pressing the Control-H key. There are two formations your wingman will fly with you in. In combat spread mode, it will increase the distance off your wing he's flying, giving extra room for maneuvering during combat. Conversely, combat cruise mode will bring him in tighter to you. To change formations, press the Control-0 key. To help in planning attacks, you can request a status check from him. He'll tell you the quantity of each weapon type he has available, as well as if his aircraft is damaged or working normally. You can also request that he remain in his current location. Press the, the Control-9 key. Now. On the other side of the ridge is a column of enemy vehicles. We're going to perform what's called a coordinated attack. You and your wingman will attack the armored column at the same time. The advantage of this is that you will be ensured maximum destruction as well as complete surprise. First, have your wingman scan the area for targets. Do this by pressing the Control-4 key. Copy. Unmasking. Any targets he finds will be sent to you via the Improved Data Modem, or IDM, which is a new system allowing all the aircraft on the battlefield to see the same things. Gradually increase collective until your radar dome is peeking out hard over the ridge. Bob back down once you've picked up the targets. Once Right now, I'd like to elaborate on something I touched on earlier. The longbow has the ability to attack groups of targets simultaneously. This is done by creating Priority Fire Zones, or PFZs. A PFZ defines an area on the battlefield represented as a box on the TSD and will send missiles to every known target in that area. To create a PFZ, use your mouse cursor and the right mouse button and drag the cursor to create a box. Try this now. Draw a PFZ around the targets closest to your wingman's position. Now, hand off the PFZ to your wingman by pressing the Control-3 key. Copy. Attacking your PFZ. Okay. You've just sent your wingman the targets you've chosen for him. Hellfire away! At this point, he'll go into weapons hold mode, waiting for your command to launch. Now, draw a PFZ around the group of targets closest to you. You're now ready to perform the attack. Order your wingman to attack his PFZ by pressing the Control-6 key. 
He'll go into weapons-free mode and will begin ripple-firing hellfires at the targets. Make sure the targets are within his missile range, otherwise he'll leave his position and move toward the targets until they're within range. Now, begin firing hellfires at the targets in your PFZ. Come on, launch some missiles. Come on, launch some missiles. Roger, we got your PFZ. Good job. You've just completed a coordinated attack. The safest and most deadly way to engage groups of threats. There are a few other wingman commands available. Copy. Attacking your target. Launching Hellfire! You can ask your wingman to engage either air or ground threats specifically. You can do this by pressing the control minus key. If you detect air threats in your area, you can ask your wingman to go into air mode while you concentrate on weight on the ground threats. Another purpose of your wingman is to provide cover for you, engaging vehicles that pose a threat to your survival. To request wingman cover, press the control plus key. Okay, that concludes this lesson. You are now ready to put this knowledge to use it in combat. Copy that. Covering. Copy. Air to air mode. Copy. Attacking your target. Stinger away! Try to remember everything I've taught you. And if you have further questions, refer to your dash 10. Good luck. Roger, attacking your target. Hellfire away!